Well, I would say matriarchy is the mirror image of patriarchy, and patriarchy we can also call androcracy. This is a domination by men. And in matriarchy, I do not see that men were suppressed by females. They were also very important in the society. A development of almost 2,000 years and dates from 4,300 to 2,800 BC. This is the period of the incursions of the people from the East. European culture is a, like a layer cake, composed of the two very different ideologies, very different religions, very different social structures. And we are the heirs of the two cultures, not one. Every European culture is a hybrid culture. And it is to my belief, very wrong to think that the European agricultural culture, all the European goddess culture was in the European, as it was proposed by Colin Renfrew, my good colleague in 87, his book, Archaeology and Language. This is a misunderstanding. The old European culture cannot be in the European because we can reconstruct the early Indo-European culture if we use linguistic evidence and mythology. And this is my book, I think, shows that this is a non-Indo-European culture, an earth-loving, art-loving culture. The Indo-European culture is a completely different culture, representing a different ideology in every aspect of culture talk about the fact that the old goddess cultures that you've been speaking about did not know warfare. They didn't know, they didn't have weapons. Uh, the invention of warfare was really an invention of the, um, the patriarchal uh, sky god cultures that came later. Uh, sky god cultures that came later.
a lot of scholars, including Maria in my view, rather make what I believe to be the mistake of thinking there must be an Indo-European religion or Indo-European way of thought, and one is male, a non-Indo-European would be female or something. I think that gets into very deep waters, and I'm not sure it's sound at all. But I do think it makes sense to say what were the origins of the Indo-European languages, and Maria thought the Indo-European homeland was north of the Black Sea, the area of uh, Russia, the Ukraine, uh, around 3000 BC, and I came to the view that that just wasn't a good argument at all. The idea was that uh, the Indo-Europeans were nomad, warrior, pastoralists, and they domesticated the horse, and they came riding into Europe in their masculine way, and brought Indo-European culture and Indo-European language. And I just don't think that's right. She came, of course, from her Lithuanian background. She was very much aware that Lithuanian is a Baltic language and therefore an Indo-European language. So she was very much aware that she was an Indo-European. She knew that the mythology and the folk culture in Lithuania was very rich and that in some ways it may have represented Indo-European mythology and folk culture. So she felt she had a direct line to these things. But at the same time, I would say critical analysis was not her strength. She was holistic, she was enthusiastic. She didn't say, wait a moment, what would the alternative view be? How would I find evidence that will refute one hypothesis or another hypothesis? She wasn't a rejectionist. As you know, in science, the scientific statement is a statement that is open to refutation. Well, Maria Gimbertas was not a refutationist. She wasn't interested in uh, refutation. She was interested in getting on with the job and getting more understandings. Uh, and that led her, I think, into formulations that sometimes were not uh, open to very critical uh, assessment. Uh, and if she was criticized, and if maybe something was shown not to be quite right, she wouldn't let that worry her. She'd say, well, never mind, put that aside, get on to the next thing. It did lead her into sometimes uh, simplified expressions. Maria's weakness, uh, perhaps as well as a strength, that she didn't develop an explicit methodology and worrying about the methodology wasn't Maria's thing. The Indo-European culture is a completely different culture. The Indo-European culture is a completely different culture.
Her name is Mirampu. She is nine years old. The result surprises even an experienced expert like Joachim Berger. Against astonishing odds, the DNA of the ancient female warrior from Russia and the little girl from Mongolia are a striking match. It's almost unbelievable what we found. The DNA sequences of the warrior woman and those from the girl of Mongolia are identical. This is a little bit like hitting the checkpot because it means they share a common ancestor. And this again means they're related not only culturally but also genetically. Male competition leading to, in the end, you only have two dominant male lines, R1B and R1A. And these are still the dominant male lines among Europeans today. Uh, it turned out, in Iilau, it turned out that the women had been ad abducted. It was a model we presented in antiquity uh, last year, uh, with these um, uh, male migrants coming in and uh, marrying in Neolithic women, we could show that many of these uh, non-local women had a Neolithic diet through their childhood. Um, so they are abducted or forcefully or peacefully, but probably forcefully abducted Neolithic women. And when it comes to male birds, there is incredible similarity. You cannot distinguish a male bird from Jutland or the Netherlands. They are absolutely similar. They, these males must have been moving, perhaps as foster children, back and forth. But when it comes to the females, there's much more local variety. These were the, coming in from the outside through exogamy. They would uh, apply, uh, bring different things in and different skills and also different, uh, different burial goods. So here we have the local variety of the court ware culture uh, among, among the female burials. But in the early phase of the court ware culture in Northwestern Europe, 90% of the burials are males. 90% of the burials are males. Well, I would say matriarchy is the mirror image of patriarchy, and patriarchy we can also call androcracy. This is a, a domination by the men. is a completely different culture.
Kon Basen Yerana Mumay Korgasen Yer Jarlı Çöp Bolsun Yer Jarlı Süt Bolsun Ermeğim Çar Bolsun Hüvdesin Oma Ar Bolsun Amanim, chivanim, kiri, anima, kizel, kiri. 